Hi, Tom here once again with another video here on my little corner of YouTube. Now, um, one of the things that you've probably guessed from looking at my other videos is that I'm a big fan of games. Uh, I'm also a fan of books about games and I do have uh, quite uh, a wide library of books about games. Uh, and I'm going to show you a couple of them now. Um, so, I've got things like this, uh, Secret Red, Blue, Green, Secret Red, Super Red, Green, Blue, which is a book uh, by a friend of mine, Rob Jones. Great little sort of novel. Uh, this one is a, a history of Nintendo consoles going all the way back to the early years of Nintendo when they were just a toy company. I say just a toy company, one of the premier toy companies. Uh, this one, which is a history of the, the Sonic, Sonic kind of uh, pantheon. Uh, and it's a really high quality book, as you can see, full colours and uh, just a really nice uh, thing to own. Uh, coming more recently now, we've got things like the, uh, the whole PlayStation Vita series from uh, Too Old for Gaming. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Vita, so I, uh, I back these on, on Kickstarter. Really cool books. And then things like uh, Dreamcast Year One, which I uh, was obviously, well not obviously, but I was interviewed as part of the, the uh, creation of that book. And Dreamcast Year 2 was coming out soon. Uh, then they've got things like this, which is the, the Dreamcast Collected Works from uh, Darren Wall. Uh, really, really cool book. And all the way up to things like this, which is the Neo Geo a Visual History, um, which is, you know, just sort of at the top of the, uh, of, the, of the tree, really, when it comes to um, high quality books about video games. Now, why am I showing you those? Well, it's a, it's a little known fact. I'm going to share a factoid with you now about myself. Uh, I'm a big, uh, a big fan of maps. Um, I've always been obsessed with maps from a very young age. And um, everything about cartography, the, the process of map making, going way back to history, in history even, um, has always just fascinated me. And to this day, I, I spend many, many more hours than I should, possibly, just kind of pouring over maps. And also books about maps. I have so many books about maps. So I've got plenty of maps, but also books about maps and here's some of those. So obviously anybody who is into maps will know everything about the Ordnance Survey, but this is the Ordnance Survey puzzle book. And as you would expect, it's a, a puzzle book about Ordnance Survey maps. No surprise there. It's a really cool book, so I'll pick that up if you get a chance. Uh, but things like uh, the Off the Map series from uh, Alistair Bonnet, off the map and beyond the map are really cool books just about bizarre places that maybe never existed um, in maps. And I think one of the, the greatest books about maps that's ever been written is this. It's called The Phantom Atlas. And it's basically about um, errors that were made on maps uh, back in antiquity and things that never actually existed but were, you know, considered to be factual up until, in some cases, up until only a few years ago. Uh, certain islands that were wrongly placed on maps uh, that, that just don't exist. So if you get, if you see this book and you're into this kind of thing, this is a must buy. It's a fantastic book. Uh, Edward Brooke Hitching is the author. So I uh, hope you can see that with my weird lighting setup. And then all the way down to things like this, which is uh, the, the Dictionary of British Place Names. If you're not from the UK and you look at a map of England and Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland, you will undoubtedly be quite amused by some of the ridiculous names that some of the places have. And, uh, and this book basically goes through, you know, the origins of all of these weird and wonderful names. The vast majority of them go back way beyond, like, the, the Doomsday Book. Uh, they're just, um, it's, it's just a really, really cool book to own. Because if you, you're going to drive down a, a road or a motorway, you see a sign for somewhere, and you go, that's an odd name, I wonder why it's called that. Then this book will tell you why it's called that. And generally, they, they date back to things like, you know, land ownership or a job that somebody did um, or whether a piece of land was near a river or a farm or something like that. It always comes down to those basic kind of uh, reasons as to why British towns and cities have pretty odd names in some cases. So that's worth a, uh, worth a look. Right, on to the point of this video. The reason why I've shown you all of those different books about video games and maps is that a new book has just been released uh, and it combines both maps and video games together. Look at this. 
combines them both together and the book is called Virtual Cities. This book is written by Konstantinos Dimopoulos. He also goes by the name Gnome online. Some of you may know him as that. Um, my, uh, my history with uh, Konstantinos goes back quite a while because when I was first starting out my, uh, my other blog thing that I do, which is the Dreamcast Junkyard, um, he was one of the very first people who would comment on my articles and my blog posts and so we kind of struck up a bit of a, uh, a friendship that way. Uh, and full disclosure, I did back this book on Unbound, so I helped fund this book. And I, it's just a really cool concept to basically map the, the virtual worlds that we see in our video games and that's, you know, it was a bit of a no-brainer for me really being a fan of gaming and mapping. So um, yeah, this is Virtual Cities. And I'm going to change the, the camera angle now. I'm going to change it so you can actually have a look at the book as I kind of just do a very brief flip through the pages. I won't show you everything obviously because that would defeat the point. Um, you know, I and he would like you to go and maybe buy this book if it appeals to you. So I'm going to swip, sw I'm going to switch the camera angle and show you the inside of the book. Okay then, here we are with the book. Um, apologies if you can hear the fans on my PC whirring in the background. They are meant to be silent fans, but they're not totally silent. Um, but I need to have the PC on because this uh, lovely Simon Stallenhag wallpaper here is illuminating my uh, my desktop, so you can see this a little bit better. Um, so this is the front cover um, of the book. As you can see, it's a hardback. Uh, there you go, just to prove it. And yeah, so the front uh, shows you uh, the, the sort of the title. Uh, so it's Virtual Cities, an Atlas and Exploration of Video Game Cities. And then the uh, the back just gives a uh, a nice explanation as to uh, the whole point of the book. So yeah, I, I do quite like this um, this aesthetic with the uh, almost with the compass on there as well. Gives it a very kind of oldie worldy kind of feel. So. What I'll do is I'll just briefly uh, go through a couple of the pages and show you the menus and all that kind of thing. But um, generally it's a really nicely uh, weighted paper. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, as I say, it is written by Konstantinos Dimopoulos, but it's also uh, illustrated with uh, original illustrations by Maria Kalikaki. I believe that's how you pronounce the name. I'm sorry if I've butchered that. I do apologise. Okay, so... Um, the contents, then, quite interesting. So the, the book is actually split into uh, three different sections, three main sections. Uh, you do have an introduction, which you know introduces the whole concept of the book to you. But you've got three different types of city. So you've got fantasy, fantasy cities in the first section, familiar cities in section two, and then future cities in section three. I will flick to some of these pages, but I think it's good, it'd be interesting to explain what these three are. So fantasy cities are cities that um, obviously do not exist. The vast majority of these don't exist, but these are ones in quite uh, quite far-fetched uh, environs, shall we say. Uh, I think the rest of them kind of speak for themselves. Familiar cities are ones that the vast majority of people are more likely to have experienced just because the games are more more popular. And then future cities are ones from uh, games, obviously, set mainly in the in the future. So a couple of uh, examples are fantasy cities. You've got things like Clock Town from The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask, um, Yarnum from uh, Bloodborne, Novigrad from The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. And then within the familiar cities, you've got uh, Metro City from Final Fight. You've got Wan Chai from Shenmue 2. And uh, Pripyat from Stalker, Call of Pripyat. And then Future Cities, uh, you know, you've got things like uh, Union City from Beneath the Steel Sky. And uh, Tarsonis City from the StarCraft series. And City 17 from Half-Life 2. Uh, you will, if you, if you buy this book, you'll undoubtedly know at least a handful of these cities. Because I'm sure you will have played games that, uh, that have been featured or set within them. So as I say, there's the introduction. 
And uh, yeah, we get onto the first section, which is Fantasy Cities. And what I'll do is I'll just quickly flick to uh, one that I've already mentioned, which is, uh, is Clock Town, just to give you uh, an idea. Let me uh, quickly, uh, I say quickly, but let me just flick through. Um, he says. Right, so here we go. Here's Clock Town. It explains to you the uh, the placing of the particular town or city in that world, in that game, and, and what its function is. And uh, you've also got some general information about the game, the platform that it was on, the year it came out, the developer, the publisher, that kind of thing. But also some, some quite nice uh, bespoke illustrations of that town. And, you know, while they're not incredibly detailed, they do actually, you know, fit the aesthetic of the place that you remember in your mind's eye. It's been a while since I played uh, Majora's Mask, to be honest. So seeing that image, I instantly remember that, you know, yeah, it does look like that. You've got the flags and the bunting up and on the, uh, you know, in the streets and that kind of... Uh, Almost like um, almost like orange hued brickwork and things, and uh, yeah, each of the each of the places within the book does have its own map as well, showing you a top down view of the of the location. So, you know, if you've played Majora's Mask, then you'll no doubt recognise the layout of this of the town, with the clock in the middle, and the the different sort of zones of the town. And of course, there's a the clock itself. So yeah, that's um, that's Clock Town. So let's move on slightly. Uh, I may do a cut here just for uh, brevity's sake, but I'll uh, move on. So you've got things like this. You've got big maps as well. This is Dunwall. And uh, one thing I do like about this is actually does remind me of um, oh, this book, which is the Necronomicon of uh, H.P. Lovecraft's. Uh, work because in the in the open in the sort of the inside cover you've got this um this map here of uh, I believe that is um Arkham. So you know if you're familiar with the work of HP Lovecraft you'll you'll be familiar with that that place and it's just a really nice addition to this book but some of the maps in this book the uh virtual cities book reminded me of that so let's move on to uh, actually let's move on. Let's let's have a look at uh, this one. This is Raccoon City. So again, this is from Resident Evil Two. And you get some familiar, um, a familiar kind of image from that city, and then you get the map. Some of the some of the entries are you know weightier if the if the location is more. If there's more to say about it really, and, and more that you know people may have may have seen. So yeah, these are. These are quite nice, these images. They're, um, hopefully you can see that. Uh, that's like a representation of the one of the first parts of the game where you were, uh, you've got all the cars on fire and you've got to find the, uh, the gun shop. That's quite nice. Silent Hill. Arkham City again. There's the uh, Lovecraft uh, connection. Steelport from uh, Saints Row the Third. There's the map. Gives you zero. Yeah, so some of these places are actually real places, but um, so here we've got a, a map of central London uh, as seen in the game. He says uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So yeah, we've got the uh, central London district there, Southwark, the Strand, Whitechapel, etc., which is quite nice. So let's move on. Yeah, so even games like The Long Dark are actually represented. So it's not all big AAA games that are all represented, but let's move on to some, uh, some future cities. So yeah, we've got uh, Tessonis City there from Starcraft. And uh, Mega Primus there from XCOM Apocalypse. Midgar, I'm sure many people will be familiar with Midgar. It's one of the most iconic cities, I think, from any game. But yeah, You've got all this content from uh, well, all these different, uh, all these different imaginary cities from games. The Citadel. If you played Mass Effect, you will no doubt be uh, very familiar with those uh, hanging walkways. The Citadel almost reminds me of if you've ever read the book Rendezvous with Rama, where the world is actually inside the sort of big cylindrical um, spaceship. It kind of always reminded me of that a little bit. 
Um, so yeah, there you go. Map of the uh, the Citadel from uh, Mass Effect. New Vegas. I mean, I could just flick through the entire book, but uh, I don't want to do that. I want you to uh, experience this for yourself. Uh, and obviously, the back there's a very nice section where he, um, Constantinos uh, thanks all of the people that helped to make this book a reality on Unbound. And, uh, and that's it, really. That's that's the book. Um, I personally think it's amazing. I love it. I love the fact that uh, somebody has gone to all this effort to compile all of these different virtual locations and put them into a, into a sort of atlas of, of sorts. But yes, this is Virtual Cities, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed me having a quick flick through uh, the pages, uh, just to give you an idea of, of what it's all about. And uh, if you'd like to purchase it, I don't obviously have anything to do with the sales or anything like that. I'm literally just a backer and person who likes this topic. So uh, I will put a link in the description if you'd like to find out more about this book. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that was uh, entertaining for you and I didn't waffle too much. But uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next video whenever that is and whatever the topic might be. Cheers!